Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video, another video in our series of videos dealing with the theory of interest, uh, is going to attempt to derive a formula uh, that allows us to calculate mortgages, sinking funds and annuities. And in particular the derivation is going to be based off a, off a simple case in which, uh, and the case is going to be based uh, from an annual perspective with respect to the application of interest. So maybe if I just pull out a sky the formula that we want to try to we want to try to develop. Okay, uh, the formula looks something like this. It says a n uh, is equal to a zero uh, times one plus i raised to the power of n. Okay, plus f times one plus i raised to the power of n minus f divided by i. Okay, now the formula looks actually quite complicated looking. Okay, uh, but the way I like to think about this formula is in parts. Okay, uh, a n is let's say is let's say the balance. Okay, is the balance. Okay, we I like to I like to consider this formula to be a representation of let's say a bank account. Okay, but there's a number of let's say there's a number of forces acting on the bank account. Okay, uh, but at any moment in time, a n is the balance uh, of the account. Okay, of the account, okay, at time, at time, at time n, let's say, okay, for argument's sake. Uh, so we have a bank account, uh, at any moment in time it has a particular balance and that's represented by an, okay. Uh, and this part of the formula here is representing, is going to represent, I suppose, the cost, okay, when we consider it from a mortgage perspective, that's probably the best way to consider it just now, yeah, is the cost, is the cost of borrowing, Okay, so this is the cost of borrowing. Okay, and this part of the formula over here is going to represent, I suppose, the the total accrual. Okay, the total accrual. Okay, accrual. Okay, of let's say repayments. Okay, of repayments. Okay, so there's two competing forces with respect to our bank account. Okay, uh, the first force is this: is that when we borrow something from the from from a bank, okay, there's a cost associated with that particular borrowing. Okay, uh, but when we borrow something from a particular bank, okay, uh, over a particular period of time, we make payments into this account. In other words, we start to pay down what we've borrowed. Okay, and so the second force that's uh, acting on this particular account is our repayments into the account. Okay, so let's just try to keep that in mind. And maybe just to try to try to uh, ration, uh, rationalize, okay, uh, the rationale, okay, uh, behind this particular this particular formula. Let's consider a simple bank account, okay. So we're going to consider a simple, a simple. Let's say actually, let's call it a simple mortgage, mortgage account, okay. That's an account that you've set up uh, that uh, takes care of all your payments, your repayments, and so on and so forth. Okay, so what I'm going to consider is something like this. Okay, I'm just going to have a little schedule. Okay, I'm going to have time down here. So this is time. Actually, I'm going to represent this by n. I probably should represent it by t. Uh, zero representing today, now. Okay, one representing one year uh, has elapsed. Two means two years has elapsed. Three years have elapsed. Four years have elapsed, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so, actually, with respect to this account, account, yeah, what we're actually saying is that we're going to take a mortgage out, okay? We're going to borrow a certain amount of money for a house, okay? We're going to take a mortgage out, and we're going to repay the mortgage back over four years. We're going to keep it simple, yeah? Okay? And let's say here we have our borrowings, okay? So there's two things going on. Uh, we have our borrowings, and we're also going to have our repayments, okay? So our repayments, okay, are also going to be are also going to be down this particular column. So these are the two competing forces associated with the with the balance of the account at any particular moment in time. And let's say, for argument's sake, that today, okay, that we borrow. Let's say we make it, we keep it simple. Let's say the house is 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 quite reasonably priced. Let's say the house is 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 priced at twenty thousand euros or twenty thousand dollars. Okay, so what we do is we borrow twenty thousand dollars. Okay, from the bank account. Okay, from the bank. Okay, uh, and what we're planning on doing is we're planning on repaying this twenty thousand back over back over four years. Okay, so the duration of the loan. Okay, the duration. Okay, uh, of the loan. Okay is 
four years okay so it's a four-year loan that we have yeah it's four years okay? uh, so let's think about it from the borrowings perspective when I borrow an amount of money today at time zero okay there's going to be a cost associated with that particular borrowing uh, and typically this particular cost okay is going to be uh, calculated through the application of interest and more importantly the interest in our case is going to be is going to be calculated based off a compounding Okay, so in our case here, the total cost of borrowing, okay, we borrow today 20,000 euros, we take it out over four years, so actually what I owe the bank back from a compounding perspective, okay, is how much I borrowed times one plus the interest rate raised to the power of, raised to the power of N, the number of years, okay. If we assume, if we assume uh, the interest rate is fixed, interest rate is fixed okay and let's say it's fixed at i is equal to four percent okay so 0, 0.0 let's actually let's say five percent 0.05 okay okay